Alrighty guys, another very common issue that we see in 3D printing is known as stringing or cobwebbing. So you might remember back in our first print results video, we had our little octopus and on his fingers he had a few little strings or cobweb looking things coming between the print and the fingers. So that's essentially what stringing is and it can happen due to excess filament being let out of the hot end during your print. Let me explain that just a little bit better. So as you come to the end of a layer, your printer stops feeding filament into your extruder because it's getting ready to travel to another part to start the next layer. But what's happening is filament still sort of drags out of that film, uh, out of that hot end. So for a very brief period of time, you've got a little bit of filament still coming out of your hot end. So when your print moves to the next layer, it's actually dragging that little tiny tag of filament between the that part of the print and the other part of the print. So it doesn't look really good. It's a very easy fix and Let's just jump into how we can do that. So what we'll do is take a look at a little stringing test that I printed out. Now I got this one from over at Matter Hackers. These guys have done a really good write up on getting rid of stringing. Um, and that's where I learned how to do it. So we're gonna take a look at this sort of process ourselves. So what we did first was turned off, I turned off retraction so we could have a good understanding of what it looked like. Now I've got these ones laying down here and you can probably see pretty clearly that we've got all these extra tags hanging out of the side of our print and it doesn't look too good at all. You can see this, you know, this is a bit of string, these are strings and these are essentially just parts that are just coming out of our printer. So that is essentially what stringing is in a nutshell and to get rid of it we essentially just need to enable retraction so retraction is during the print, it comes to the end of a layer and what the printer decides to do instead of just moving straight to the next layer point is it actually retracts a little bit of filament. So it pulls it back up. There's a positive pressure going on in the hot end that's letting the, the filament lay down. And when you pull a little bit of filament back up, it actually sucks that little bit of filament up. And for that brief period of time, you've actually got like a negative pressure in the hot end that stops the filament going out. So that's the idea, the basic idea of uh, of retraction. Let's take a look at our print and we'll take a look at what we can do to turn retraction on and see the uh, more advanced settings to do with retraction. So we're over here in Cura now and first off we can go to, like I said before, we'll be in the full settings window for the rest of using Cura because these are all sort of more, very, more precise uh, settings that we're changing and playing around with. So always being in the full settings is a good one. Going to the advanced tab first, and we can see here, these are the two main settings for retraction. These are the ones that are important. You've got a couple of other settings that we'll look at in a second, but these are the ones that you'll be tuning to get the right value. So like with everything in Cura, you can just mouse over it and check out what it says. So this is the speed at which the filament is retracted. So you can imagine when it's coming up to that retraction move, how quickly it's gonna pull it back out. Now, there's two things that you need to know about retraction speed is you want it as high as possible without grinding your filament. So grinding filament is essentially when your hob bolt, which is part of your tool head, turns too quickly when it's retracting and it takes bites out of your filament. And essentially you get, instead of a nice uniform piece of filament that then gets pulled back down into the hot end to continue extruding, you get a bit of a semicircle from that hob bolt chewing the filament out. And once it's ground out, it can't move up and down and you'll essentially think you've got a clogged extruder, but it's not that, you've just got your retraction settings wrong. So retraction speed, usually 10 millimeters per second is quite good for us, for most of our prints, and distance, this is how much we're actually retracting. So the distance of retraction is quite important too because if you don't retract enough, you'll still get stringing. If you retract, retract too much, you will get essentially cold, cold plastic being pushed down, not cold, but when it goes to push down at the start of the next layer, that's what we're talking about when it's moving over there, as it goes to push down, there'll be too much, too much negative pressure in that hot end. And when you go to start extruding, it won't start extruding for a millimeter or two, if that makes sense. So you can imagine that's not what you want. You wanna get like that Goldilocks value, that just right value. Usually one to two millimeters works really well there. But like I said, we've got this little uh, printing test here, this retraction printing test. So what you can do is print this out and then increase that from say a value of 0.5 millimeters, do three or four prints all the way up to two, two and a half, three millimeters. Have a look at what the finished quality of 
your print is and then decide what's best for that particular filament you're using. Finally, let's have a look at some of the expert settings of retraction. This is the main point at which you enable retraction. If you turn that off, none of these settings will be um, completed. And if we looked at the layers view, we could actually see, we could pretty much have a good understanding of where we would see stringing. So if we looked right there, see that blue line that's traveling over the print to there, that's where we would see stringing. Anywhere where that blue line is traveling between parts of our print, particularly over here, we would see stringing there if we turned the traction off. So it's good to just have it on. Don't really ever need to turn it off completely. And we'll go into some expert menu options. So minimum travel, this is more of a setting of when the print is going to decide to retract. So for minimum travel, it means how far does this blue line need to be before I actually know that I have to retract? So if the distance between there and there is less than 1.5 millimeters, there won't be a retraction and you'll be likely to see stringing even with retraction enabled. So this is a value that's quite important and you might change it depending on the size of your print. Combing refers to where the tool head moves before it travels. So you can imagine for some of these prints, you don't necessarily have to go over you know, non-printed parts, you can sometimes travel all the way back around in a travel move to get to here to start the next layer without actually bridging a gap. So combing enabled means that your printer is gonna essentially preference moving over previously printed parts rather than moving over non-previously printed layers. And by doing that, you might be able to hide some of the stringing that might naturally occur because it's gonna be filled in with infill and all that sort of thing. So it's something to work on with combing and that drop down box also has the option to turn that off if you don't wanna do it or you can put it on no skin, meaning it won't happen on the surface layers of your print. Minimal extrusion before retracting is a pretty self-explanatory one. This means that if the printer extrudes at least 0.005 millimeters of filament, it's going to be ready to retract after that point. Essentially, that's, at, that's the point where we get that positive pressure in the hot end and it needs to um, it retract to have a safe print. And finally, the Z hop when retracting is the final option there. And that's essentially how much the tool head is going to lift itself away from the print before it makes a travel move to an, the next point in the print. So if, if I'm going to retract and move, how far do I have to lift myself up as well? And that's just safely so you can clear any previously printed parts, especially if there's any sort of um, inaccuracy there, you can just skip over it. So usually one step, or so one layer height is what I'd probably use. Um, so if I was using 0.38, you know, 0.38 would be fine to use there, but you can see in the tool tip, they're recommending a value of 0.075, so that's not a lot. It all depends on your own preferences. Now, if you're still getting issues with stringing or you're getting issues with grinding your filament or your tool head's making a funny sound when it's trying to retract, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take a look at your acceleration of your retraction stepper motor. You can do this by accessing the firmware on your printer. Now, I'm not gonna go into showing you guys how to do it because usually nine times out of 10, it's completely okay and you can fix up all your settings with what we've just looked at here. But if you did need to, um, send us a message or hit us up in the forum and I will go through that with you so you know how to do it. So that's pretty much covered stringing. I haven't got the model that I printed because I lost all the little boxes, but essentially we, we can dial our uh, retraction settings in quite easily with this file. So those files will be over to the left there. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and we're gonna move into some overhangs and supports videos in a second.